In this video, I want to build on some of the stuff that we talked about in class using the system IO namespace and using the file class. And so that, that system IO namespace allowed us to uh, have access to certain classes that allow us to deal with like directories and uh, files. And specifically that file class allowed us to create, copy, delete, move, open, read, you know, single files on your file system. So both of these unlocked a new ability for you in terms of your applications. It allowed you to have persistent information. So it, now when someone opens up your application, you can read in some like saved state and use it. And then when they close the application, you can save the state again. So if you're thinking about a game, it could be like they open it up, you've got their name saved, their level, um, they play and you save their state before the application closed. When they open it up again, you, you've got that persistent information. So your, your application can be a little bit more complex. It allows you to do new and interesting things by having this persistent information. But one of the things that we kind of need to cover is how to store more complex types of information um, in a file. So for instance, today what we're gonna be focusing on is this movie quotes text file that I pulled together that has uh, quotes with the movie and year uh, which that quote came from. And I have a, a challenge version that has the quote, the movie, the year, the IMDb rating, and the Rotten Tomatoes rating. So by working through these two examples, we're going just from, uh, we're going beyond what we learned in class of just like reading files and writing files, but actually parsing complex information in a file. Like here, what we wanna do when we read this file is be able to pull out all of these pieces of information separately. Um, and then use them in our application. So print out the Rotten Tomatoes score and put a percent sign after it, or um, format the quote above the movie that the quote came from. And as a quick tangent, there, there are a whole bunch of data sets available to you that if you wanted to bring into your applications and play with, you totally could. So data.gov is one place where you can find these. This is a federal collection of open data sources from all sorts of organizations. And like, for instance, here's one that is popular baby names from the city of New York. And they give you a comma separated values file or a CSV file that you can download. Or here's another one that is from the city of Bloomington and it is uh, reports of stolen guns. And if you open either of these, like here's the baby names open with notepad, you can see, oh, huh, that, that's pretty easy to read. Um, so we've got the year, then the gender, then the ethnicity, then the first name, Geraldine, and then the count, how many people had that name, and then the rank, where is that in um, this whole document? How popular was that name? So once we learn how to deal with these movie quote uh, files, then it would be a cinch to go ahead and download the popular baby names and parse this information and say like print out what was the most popular baby name or what was the 10th most popular baby name. Okay, so to get started, I want you to download the starter files that I'll have linked with this video. And it is a blank or mostly blank project here that has a couple of things. So we've got program.cs, which is our entry point for our application. And so this is instantiating a instance of the movie quote app, and it is calling the run method on that movie quote app. So if we check out the movie quote app, all it does is set up the title of our application and then run this private method here that waits for any key to be pressed. So if we run it, we should see that title, it should say wait for any key or uh, press any key. So this is just the skeleton for us. We're gonna be putting our code in here. This is where we're gonna try and load data from the movie quotes file. And I've included a download, even though I'm gonna show you how to add um, this to your project in a second. Um, so save this. And there's also a movie quote class that we're gonna use. So the goal is to take our movie quotes from this TXT, load them into instances of this movie quote class. So the movie quote is a container for the, the um, text, the author, maybe we'll rename that, that should be probably be speaker, um, and then the year. So what was the quote? 
what was the per, who was the person who said it and what was the year that it that movie was released and then this has a display method that lets you actually just print that out in a, a little formatted way here okay so what we want in our application is to be able to load all of that txt file create instances of our movie quote class and then use them in some way. And we'll start out by just like printing out all of the quotes. But one of the challenges will be to just display a random movie quote when the application loads. So getting started here, what I want to do is show you how to add a TXT file to your project. So if this weren't in the project, what I would do is I would go to wherever that TXT file is. Like here, this is uh, at this URL and I could download it. And then I could unzip this. And inside here, I've got my TXT. And if you, uh, there, there are two ways that you can bring a TXT file into your solution. So if I delete the one that I've got in here already, I can take this TXT file and drag it specifically onto my project here to add it to the project. If I just drag it down here, this is not gonna add it to my project. You see it doesn't show up here, it just opens in my editor. So it's not actually included in my project. But if I drag it to my project like this, now that file will be included in here. Um, so it is inside of the project folder where my CS file is. The other way that you can do this is to file, whoops, uh, not file, project, add existing item, and then you can navigate to wherever that is on your computer. So here it was in my downloads folder, um, and I'll change this to show me all types of files. Then I'll click on movie quotes, click add, and it gets added to my project here. So there's an important thing we have to do after we add this TXT to our project, um, and that is configuring it so that if I click on it and look in my properties panel down here, that um, this is copied to the output directory. By default, it is gonna be set to not copy over. And let me show you what that looks like. So if I go to where this project is on my computer, the bin, when we hit build, the bin is where the binary or the executable is stored. So if I delete this build and I run this again, and then close the application, look back at that folder here. So that folder's back, so this has the built version of my application, and this would be what I could send to someone to let them play this application on their own machine. So if someone else clicks on the movie quote, um, the application runs, it doesn't need Visual Studio. But what you see is that there is no TXT file here next to the executable. So if we shared, if we zipped up this folder, sent it to someone, told them to run it, they wouldn't get the movie quotes along with the application. So what we want to do is click on moviequotes.txt, and uh, there are two options. One is copy always, and the other is copy if newer. So I'm generally going to default to choosing copy if newer, which means that if this file has changed recently, um, a new version will be copied over. But if a new version, if there are no changes, it's just going to use the previous version that was in there. Either would work in the context of this application. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild it and we're going to watch as that file shows up here. So I'm going to hit play and as it builds, we can see movie quotes just got copied over into that file with the executable. So now if I were to send this to someone, zip this up, they would have the application and the TXT file. So both of those together would mean that you, if we had written our application that read that TXT file and did something with it, the user that we sent this to would be able to run it and see all those movie quotes. If we don't set it to copy over, that TXT file doesn't come along for the ride, it's not there with the executable, and no one will be able to see it. Your application will likely crash when someone tries to run it if your application depends on reading from that file. Okay, so let's look at our movie quote app. And the first thing I want to do is just review something that we did before. So I'm going to create a field here, private string quotes file path, and set it equal to movie quotes dot txt. So this is where uh, we are storing the 
path to get to this file. And when we have our executable next to our movie quotes.txt, that means that we don't have to specify a path like bin debug dot uh, uh, netcore app 3.1 slash movie quotes at txt we can just say txt and because they're next to each other the application will know where to find that movie quotes file so we've got our quotes file and then we can use something that we learned about in class read all text whoops um remember let's let's do a quick review since uh it's helpful to review. So the system IO namespace, that's the thing that contains the directory and file class. And the file class has a bunch of methods for us to manipulate files. And we saw in class that we could read all of the text in a file using the read all text method here. So what it does is open the text file, read all the text and close that file. And if I click on this, I can see Okay, this is a static method of the file class. It returns a string and we give it a path to wherever that file is that we want to read. So as I was typing before, you know, I was trying to type file and the autocompletes weren't popping up. And that's because we, if we want to use file, it actually lives in system.io.file. And if we wanted to read all text, we, we could specify this fully qualified path here to get to this method. Or we could say we are using system.io, which allows us to use anything that's inside of this namespace without prefixing it. So now we could just say file.readAllText and pass in our quotes file path. And then we could write out all of the contents of that file. So if we've copied that txt file over with our exe, then here we go. We can see everything that's in there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to add a label here, print all the contents out in one string, and let's comment this out. So that was just refreshing our, me our memory on the file class system.io. What we want to do now is actually figure out how we're going to handle this data. So this is a little bit more challenging than what we've done before in that we have data that's split over multiple lines and we have data that is like jammed together on a single line and separated by commas. So we'll kind of break this down into two parts. One, we got to figure out how to pull data from multiple lines and the other piece is how to unpack this data here separated by commas. So let's start with that data that's separated by commas, and let's pull up a reference page. If we search for C sharp string split Microsoft, um, we'll get two links. We'll get the string split method from the Microsoft documentation, and we'll get this guide parsing strings using string.split in C sharp. So if we look at this, what it's doing is we've got a string and once we've got a string, we can call the split method on that string and pass in a character, which is going to return to us a array of strings. So here, this is looping over that array and printing out each word one at a time. And if we run it in the documentation here, we can see, ah, it was able to go to the string and take each thing that was separated by a space and put it into its own element in this array. So then when we loop over that array, we've got each element, each word separately. And if we exit focus mode here, there, there's some more documentation about um, how this works, like when you have multiple spaces, uh, if you want to split using multiple characters. Um, so this is a good guide to read through as you're thinking about splitting, but really all we need is this, this basic version where we're splitting, and instead of splitting on a space, we want to split on a string. So it's always good to, to practice these things in really small steps. So here, like, maybe we'll grab this line, and back in our application, we'll simulate it by saying, let's say we got to the point where we have read that in. We've got the movie info for the godfather here. We've got that line. 
we can create an array of, let's call it movie info parts, where we do movie info dot split, because movie info is a string, and then we are going to create a character that contains a comma. Uh, so the d single quotes represents that we're talking about a character, a single character, and double quotes would mean that we're indicating a string. And so here we, we want to split on that character of a comma, that single character. And then let's throw a breakpoint in here so that we can see what we've got. So I'm going to hit play. We've got this, we're broken on this line. So right now this is null because the split hasn't happened yet. But if I step to the next line and hover over movie parts, we actually see, oh, huh. We got the Godfather in index zero and we have 1972 as a string in index one. So this, we could just grab index zero and say that it's the, the movie name, and then we can grab index one and say that it's the year. We'll, we'll make sure to convert that to a number. Um, and then we would be able to plug that into our um, movie quote class. So let's leave debugger here, and let's say here's our movie name. That is equal to movie info parts zero. It's that first thing. And then we can say int year is equal to convert dot two int 32 movie info parts one. So now we've taken that first thing, the movie name, and that second thing, the year, and parsed them into variables that we can use here. So let's also grab the quote Let's say movie quote is equal to going to make an offer you can't refuse. And then we can plug these into our movie quote class and then call the display method. So maybe instead of calling this movie quote, let, let's call this like movie quote text so that we can have a movie quote God father quote is equal to new movie quote where we're going to pass in that movie quote text we're going to pass in the movie name and we'll pass in the year now that we've got that quote we can call display and hopefully if we've done everything right we should see that movie quote show up nicely formatted Make him offer you can't refuse. The Godfather, 1972. So while we're at it, um, these names <laughs> don't make the most sense for this class. So I'm going to rename them, and I'll get to show you how to use automatic renaming in C Sharp. So if you press Control R and then hit R a second time, so Control R, I'm leaving my finger on the control key and then hitting R again. This allows me to rename that variable, that field text to be whatever I want. So maybe I'll call it the quote text. And then the author here, you know, that doesn't make sense. Let's call that the movie. And so that renamed text everywhere where we used it and that renamed author everywhere we used it. And then I will rename these parameters to match. So let's say that this is the quote and this is the control R, R, this is the movie. And if I save this and give it a run, we should see that nothing has broken. All we've done is rename those variables. So I may update the starter files or I may leave this for you so that you can go through that process of trying to rename things because that's actually a useful thing to know how to do. Okay, so we're, we're really close actually. We, we figured out if we had those two lines in variables, we would know how to parse them. We'd be able to split this one to pull out the individual information and we'd be able to throw this one um, directly into our constructor.
And with all of that, we'd be able to display a quote. So let's comment that out. And let's start thinking about how we're going to do this um, to actually run this code, but on everything that's in our file. So when we want to go through everything that's in our file, we, we've seen that in the file class, we have a method that allows us to read the lines in a file. So read all lines gives us back a string array where each element in the array is a single line in our file. So string lines equals file dot read all lines and pass in our quotes file path. This gives us back an array where every element in the array is one of our lines. So if I run it, I'm, I throw my debugger in, I can look at the lines and I can see, oh, line zero is, I'm gonna make an offer you can't refuse. Line one is the godfather. Line two is blank. Line three is may the force be with you. Then Star Wars, etc., all the way through. So unlike previous examples we did in class where you wanna go one line at a time, what we actually wanna do is start on line zero, grab the quote, grab the next line, and then skip our way down to line three or uh, index three, grab the quote, grab the next line, skip our way to index six and go forth through um, all of these lines. So we want to start at zero, then we want to hop to three, then to six, then to nine, then to 12. So each time we're going up by three. So let's create a loop here for int i is zero. So we're starting at the first line and we're saying we're going to go as long as we still have lines in our file, lines.length. And instead of going i plus equals one, which would go through each line one at a time, what we want to do, oh my goodness, go away, <laughs> notifications. Uh, what we want to do instead of going up by one each time is go up by three. So if we were to just print out right line lines I, we're going to see we have gotten each of the quotes without the blank line and without the line that has the information about the quote in here. So string the quote text is equal to lines I. And let's throw a breakpoint in here. So when we are through going through our loop here, the first time it runs, it pulls out that quote text. I'm going to make an, an offer you can't refuse. And if we look at our lines variable, we have that in index zero. So our I is zero currently. It's the first time through the loop. What we want to do is actually say I plus one to get that next line in the file. So uh, if we just use I, that'll give us this. If we use I plus one, that'll offset us by one so that we get Godfather 1972. So we could say movie info is lines plus one. And let's get rid of this breakpoint. And to prove that that's working, let's print out the movie quote and then we'll print out the movie info. And there we go, we, we've got May the Force Be With You, Star Wars, E.T., um, and then the date, all the way through our, our full data set here. So we, we figured out how we can grab those chunks rather than going line by line, now we're grabbing uh, two lines at a time and we're skipping around our file. So we basically got everything we need from up here. So now what we're just gonna do is split this movie info into those parts, grab the name from the first part, grab the year from the second part, and then we can create our quote from that. So movie quote, quote equals new movie quote, pass in the movie, uh, let's, we called it quote text here, pass in the movie name, pass in the year, And then we can call quote dot display. 
So as we're parsing those, we're putting them into a new instance here, a new movie quote, and then we are calling the display method. And so that should nicely format all of our um, quotes here using our class. This is great. The next thing we want to do is store these into a list rather than grabbing them and forcing them to display immediately. Let's move um, this logic into an array. So we want, or um, actually we're going to use a list here. So remember the difference between list and array, that array is a fixed size and list can actually grow dynamically. And growing dynamically is what we want in this situation. We, we don't know how many quotes we want to put into this list when we start up our application. So we just want to be able to shove in a new quote into that list every time we uh, instantiate one. So we want a list of movie quotes. Set that equal to a new list. So it's empty. And then every time we grab a quote, we want to throw that into our list. So we can add movie quote. Whoops, that should be quote. We want to throw this variable in here. Then we can get rid of the display. And if we wanted to loop over all of the quotes, now that we've got them in a list, we can use a for each loop. So we can say for each movie quote, quote in movie quotes, quote dot display. And this should functionally do the same thing, but we've refactored where the data is stored. So now we have access to all of the quotes in a list which sets us up um, in a nice place for being able to do the next step. So I'm gonna leave it here and I'm gonna leave it with uh, a couple of challenges for you to do. So one is um, using our random knowledge that we built up already. Instead of displaying all of the quotes, just display a random quote from this list. Just one, you don't have to display multiple. Um, so pull up a random quote and then the other challenge is going to be, well, you figured out how to use this set of data, these movie quotes that just had the title of the movie and then the year. Now you're going to be challenged to use this set, which has the quote, the title of the year, the IMDb rating, and the um, Rotten Tomatoes rating. So you'll download this included in your project, or you'll copy and paste this over the current text file to get it in there. And you're gonna to have to update a few things to get this working. So you're gonna to have to update your movie quote class to make room for these two fields. And you'll have to update to the display so that they actually show up. And your final version might look something like this. Pulls a random one, displays the title, the um, or the quote, the title of the movie, the year, and then the IMDb score and the Rotten Tomatoes rating. So small tweak on what you've learned, but this will help push you to really understand split um, and classes. So I'm going to leave that there. The, the links will be along with this video for where to find those text files. And um, in Canvas, I will have these challenges listed out along with the video. So good luck.